Assalamu alaikum. I'm here to talk about Surah Al Kaf and the meaning behind it and the stories within it. Surah Al Kaf uh, starts off with talking about how Allah will punish those who disbelieve in Him and His message and His prophets. And it also talks about how um, those who say that Allah has taken offspring are just liars and they'll be punished in hellfire. And it talks about the details of the punishment and hellfire in the beginning. And then it talks about examples of stories, which starts off about the children in the cave. They were, they had, they, they seeked help from Allah, from the disbelievers in their town. And Allah uh, put them in sleep for 300 years and nine months, but Allah knows best for what the exact number is, but this is just according to the translation. And then it goes to um, the story of the two gardens. So one man was really arrogant, and he had in better wealth, he had better children, he had really good gardens and stuff. He was like, he had the best of everything. And he was bragging to one of the poorer acquaintances of him, which is the other garden, well, the other owner of the garden. And he was like, Oh, I don't think my garden will ever perish. And he would start talking about how he disbelieved in Allah. And the other, and the believer, well, the other owner of the garden, went, do you not believe in the, in the Lord that created you from, uh, from, uh, from a sperm and an egg and changed you and shaped you into a man? And basically what happens later on is that the man who had bragged arrogantly and disbelieved in Allah, his garden was in ruins and he had spent so much money on it and he had wished that he had never associated anyone with his Lord and he couldn't even do anything about it because only Allah is the most supreme power of this world and all, all worlds. And then it goes to the story of Prophet Musa and Kidr and he... Prophet Musa starts off by saying he will never stop traveling until he reaches the junction of the two seas. And when he does reach it, um, he asks his boy servant to bring him the fish. But the fish somehow went somewhere miraculously. And it went back to the sea. <laughs> to avoid being eaten, of course. Allah knows best what happened. But basically... Uh, Prophet Musa was like, oh man, that's what we were looking for. So then they went back with his boy servant. And then they met uh, Kidr, who has been blessed by Allah with some certain knowledge and was using that knowledge to help people from like any circumstances. And so Prophet Musa asked to accompany Kidr, but Kidr was like, no, you won't have patience with me. And Prophet Musa was like, well, I promise I will be uh, patient with you, inshallah. So Kidder takes him along with him. And so they reach a group, uh, <laughs> across a group of people who are poor and were working in the seas. And then, so Kidder took, scuttled the boat. And Prophet Musa was like, you just did a really bad thing. And then Kidder was like, didn't I tell you you wouldn't have patience with me? And so Prophet Musa was like, please forgive me. Uh, please forgive me. Uh, I promise that like, I completely forgot about it and I'll try to be being more patient and so they keep walking on until Kidder came across a boy and uh and killed him well killed i'm not sure but like harmed him in some way and prophet musa was like huh <laughs> so basically and he was like he was just like didn't you you just did a really bad thing and Kidder was like I told you you wouldn't have patience with me. And then Prophet Musa was like, the next time I lose my patience with you and question you, then you have no more excuses to keep me as a acquaintance. So then they continue on until a town, which was really mean to them and wouldn't really offer them shelter or anything. So then they came across this really old wall that was like gonna break down and get it fixed in place. And then Prophet Musa was like, you know, you could have charged anything for that if you really wanted to and then Kidder was like this is the parting between us I will explain the t all the three situations 
because you didn't have patience to wait for the, my explanations. First was the people of the sea. And the reason why he did that is because there was a king coming to, like, king overseas coming to take every good boat. And so he intended to create damage so they wouldn't take the boat from the poor people. The second was that the boy was a, like, they feared that the boy was, like, gonna be a really bad disbeliever and gonna rebel against the parents who were actually really good believers. So then we hoped that our Lord would change him for the better. And so for the third one, the wall belonged to some orphans and their father and mother had been righteous. It only mentioned the father, but I'm assuming both parents. And so Allah had intended them for their inheritance, which was under the wall, to be given to them once they're of age. And then so we go to the, the story of Dulkarnain and the story of, uh, and which is basically deals with Yajuj and Majuj. So basically Dulkarnain kept walking along a path and basically he came across a group of people who were begging him like, please help us. There's Yajuj and Majuj doing wrong in our lands. And he was like, we'll do like anything for you to help us. And then he was like, well, my Lord has given me much prosperity and stuff, but if you assist me with helping me with making the wall and manpa manpower and strength, then I will help you. And so they decided to get iron and steel, maybe. I can't exactly remember, but... So they decided to do that, and then they created a wall so that Yajuj and Maju couldn't tunnel through it or do anything to it. And so... Uh, and so, like, everyone was happy, but Dulkarnain says, "My lord, uh, the word of my lord is true, that one day, that for now it will be raised, but one day, once it's the time, the wall will be flat to the ground. It will be, like, the same level of the ground, and Yajuj and Majuj will flood the lands like crazy, and then the trumpet will blow, and everything will be, like, into the day of judgment. And so, the final part of al Kaf was when Prophet Muhammad was talking to another companion and was saying, I am only a man like you. I have my desires. I have this. I need to eat. I need to drink. So basically, he was just saying that he was just the same man. But he just, because Prophet Muhammad, because only Allah is the highest power in this world, in all the worlds, he created everything. So basically, there's that.